I've always hinted and joked that a vegan diet made you attracted to the same gender. I speculated that there could be some truth to it, but for the most part I think it's pretty obvious in the mannerisms and how I pronounce a vegan diet that I am joking. Unfortunately, over the past week, I've realized two things. One is that vegans don't seem to think I'm joking. They are extremely offended. And two is that my speculations were right. Judging by the amount of vegans that are obsessed with my handsome Italian ass, I am assuming they are not a bunch of women fawning over my meat. I mean, I've never seen guys so obsessed with another dude, I, unless they want to meet me in the sauna later. You would think vegans were an accepting group of people, compassionate towards the animals, but here they are trying to assassinate my character by ad hominem attacking me, all in defense of a diet that can kill babies, maim children, and makes a fair amount of men from my observation, a bit effeminate. Maybe we'll bring up some direct evidence later, but if you want to hear a soy boy talk, just search vegan on YouTube. There is truth to my message, and the goal is to warn people about the dangers of not just a vegan diet, but any modern conventional product, including feedlot beef. Ooh -wee! Now, I hate to break it to you fairy boys, you know, as much as I'd like to play for the funner team, I'm not attracted to men. I've never had a relationship or intimacy with a man. Now, you guys can try to prove I'm gay all you want. If it makes you feel better, if in your fairy boy vegan fantasy world, there is some alternate dimension where you're playing with my fat Italian hug, I'm glad it makes you happy. It's never going to happen. DMing me and telling me to come out of the closet isn't going to make me your Italian prince boyfriend. And listen, there's nothing wrong with playing with a little bit of sausage. You know, as a carnivore, you guys know I'm a fan of the cylindrical meat myself. So let's move on to the topic at hand. Will a vegan diet, or any diet for that matter, alter your hormones to the point where it changes who you are attracted to? I mean, it would make sense. What makes a man? Testosterone, what makes a woman? Estrogen. Of course, both men and women have both of these hormones, but the ratios are drastically different. If you happen to give a man the hormonal ratios of a woman, you know, through estrogen, endocrine disruptors in the diet, would that person exhibit female behavior? I think so. Now, before vegans say that eggs, dairy, and meat have more estrogen than certain plant foods, I mean, they're absolutely right, but things like soy formula and certain plant foods are just as estrogenic, if not more so than animal-based alternatives. Our food supply is tainted with estrogen, whether you're vegan or carnivore. Oh, wee! Prenatal endocrine influences on sexual orientation and on sexually differentiated childhood behavior. The evidence supports a role for prenatal testosterone exposure in the development of sex-typed interest in childhood, as well as in sexual orientation in later life, at least for some individuals. Once the gonads have developed as testes or ovaries, their hormonal products, particularly testicular hormones, determine physical development as male or female, a process called sexual differentiation. Now, now, this isn't necessarily determined by what the person consumes. It has to do with the hormonal levels of the mother as well. So in this study, they injected testosterone into pregnant guinea pigs. The females that were born had genitalia similar to males. Male-like mounting behavior was observed in both male and female guinea pigs. The results are believed to justify the conclusion that the prenatal period is a time when fetal morphogenic substances have an organizing action on the neural tissues mediating mating behavior. Now, what does this mean? In the past, we've spoken about how nutrients, the vitamins and minerals in our diets can influence gene expression, literally tell our bodies what to do on a molecular level. The same thing can happen with artificial hormones, specifically estrogens in the diet. You know, even if your mother was taking birth control, that could literally have an effect on your development. For example, 
treating female rodents with testosterone early in life decreases their female typical behavior in adulthood and increases their male typical behavior. Similarly, castrating male rodents early in life leads to decreased male typical and increased female typical behavior subsequently. What's important to note here is that this isn't just the effect of a hormone on a person in general. Natural hormone ratios have to be altered during certain stages of life. You know, so when you receive estrogen or testosterone at a younger age in developmental stages, it will have a more severe effect on your behavior. These organizing actions of sex steroids on behavior are paralleled by irreversible changes in brain structure. Embryonic sex steroids differentiate the size of several brain structures, including the sexually dimorphic nucleus of the preoptic area. This group of cells is five to six times larger in male rats than in females. And this difference results almost exclusively from the action of testosterone during late embryonic life and the first days of postnatal life. Once acquired, the sex typical size cannot be altered in adulthood by steroid hormones. So basically, altered hormone levels in the brain during developmental periods will determine your sexual orientation by permanently changing parts of your brain. If you look at any studies, all the medical literature points to this same conclusion. This preference for a partner of the same or the opposite sex is also determined by prenatal hormones and can be reversed by hormonal treatments during early development, weeks preceding or immediately after birth depending on the species. There is no disputing this, and people that say you're born gay are technically right, but if there wasn't estrogen in the water, it might not have happened. I think it's become generally accepted that Endocrine disruptors are present in our modern lifestyle in incredibly high unnatural amounts. Endocrine disruptors being chemicals that interfere with hormonal systems at certain dosages. And these are everywhere. As I said, birth control in the water supply, plastic bottles containing endocrine disruptors, it's in our metal food cans, all of the canned food, it's in the food itself because of the estrogen water used to create the product, the estrogenic atrazine sprayed on crops being fed to cows, all of the animals, you know, corn and soy, cows urinating that estrogen into the water supply, that combined with the birth control women are taking makes something as harmless as drinking water a danger to your hormonal function your entire endocrine system. It's in thermal receipt paper. Every time you go to a grocery store and take that receipt, toys, cosmetics, and on top of that, any pollutants such as BPA, dioxins, lead, arsenic, things we are dumping in our oceans, our food supply, our water supply, also have hormonal disrupting effects. It is blatantly obvious what is going on here. There is a war on our sexuality, on both males and females, by our society, by our government, whether it is intentional or not. For anyone to deny this, for anyone to ask for further proof, is obviously part of that agenda to turn everyone into a sheepish robot. Everything you eat is literally sprayed and grown with estrogen. Everything you touch is full of estrogen. And although we know this affects both males and females, it seems like men get the shorter end of the stick. Obviously, filling up either sex with exogenous outside estrogen is going to cause issues, but at least the woman still retain some of their feminine traits. And I think anyone would agree that testosterone replacement and steroid use in males is more prevalent than female hormone replacement. Of course, there are food products like soy, flax seeds, certain plants that have high amounts of phytoestrogens. I'm sure you guys, you know, would bother me if I didn't mention those things. But as we know, those plants are being fed to animals. Therefore, it's in the meat we are eating. The message here is that our food supply is making us a bunch of estrogenic fairy boys. And I hate to break it to you guys, but not all of you are going to be pretty Roman statues. So it's not a good thing. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess we can end on that note. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. I hope this influences you to increase your food quality, whether that's buying organic or going to a local farm to avoid all of these negative things. Uh, hopefully we can restore our health through nutrition and become intelligent enough to recognize these special interest funded influencers that are social engineering the behavior 
the future of our society. And it's very discouraging, you know, as much as I like to be a pessimist and just say their agenda is gonna happen anyway, all I can do is try my best. If you guys wanna support me, of course, please, please, please share the video. Uh, you know, we launched organsupplements.com yesterday. All the funds are going to a local farm to provide you guys with high quality raw dairy, raw eggs, uh, grain-free, soy-free eggs. You guys can check out Frankie's Free Range Meat for quality animal foods at the most affordable price online. Of course, Frankie's Naturals for hygiene and cosmetic products and frank-defano.com for a free carnivore diet meal plan. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. My brain's too big.